Hello my friends, Vladimir here. South Korea is economically highly developed country with high average salaries and it's pretty expensive country for living. Jeju Island is a beautiful place where Koreans from mainland having rest on their vacations or honeymoon. And you guess it, having vacations in Jeju Island or Jeju Do is also very expensive, but not for these guys. Let me introduce you Matt and Eugene. They are staying in Jeju for one month on a low budget. They didn't bring suitcases and any big luggage with them, only backpacks and stuff they can carry on themselves. Very minimalistic and highly effective. I asked them for interview to share their experience with you, my friends. They will tell us how to live in Jeju for one month on low budget and overall what is Jeju all about. Let's dive in. <laughs> so my name is Matt. My name is Yuji. And we're basically a Korean Canadian couple. We've been married for four years now. And right now we're living in Jeju for one month. We film videos for our YouTube channel. It's all about adventure and cycling. And right now we're just relaxing. So Jeju is kind of like the tropical island of Korea. It can be seen kind of like Hawaii would be for America. And I think a lot of people might have an idea that Jeju is like a tropical paradise that you can relax in nature and be away from everybody. But Jeju is actually a really developed island. So they've built museums everywhere, massive hotels, resorts all over the island. So it's not really a place where you go to escape people. It's more of a place where you go to relax and you kind of have to be with other people a lot too. So it's good that people know that uh, just so they can understand what Jeju is, for sure. If you research a lot about like unknown places, like from the, um, the people who've been to Jeju before, a lot should be a lot because every year most most places has so many people right you will be able to find some places very quiet and still like all the jeju so that it'll be interesting to make a plan to find some quiet like all the jeju places then it'll be fun mm -hmm. So now we've been here for just over two weeks, two and a half weeks we've been in Jeju. Our plan is to stay until July 4th, but it's not like a super concrete plan. We could go back a little bit later or a little bit earlier. We're not too sure, but that's the plan for now. Because we, we don't have any flight to get to go back to Seoul now. So we'll see about that later. Okay, so when we came to Jeju, our plan was to spend 50,000 won every day. And when we started our first week, we were really rigid with it, really strict, <laughs> made sure we didn't go over it at all. And to be honest, that didn't really fit with how we live in general. Yeah, it got so stressful yeah. with the money, <laughs> with the budget. <laughs> <laughs> we were kind of like, like, what's the point of being stressed out while you're relaxing, you know? So instead of being super strict about it, we kind of came up with a new system where we, we basically travel as cheaply as possible, but still making, still giving us enough freedom and flexibility to relax and enjoy good food. And it's, it's basically the perfect system that works for us. So the average would be, about 50,000 to 70,000 Korean won every day for the both of us. Mm -hmm. So there is, there are some activities that you can do in Jeju, but you have to pay, right? Like some, for example, snorkeling or henya. you know henya? So in Jeju, there's like the, the harmonies, 
they're called Hanya, and they dive to get seafood. Yeah, not only harmony, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> like, like mostly like ordinary yeah. do that, do the job. So Hanya tail, that means that you can experience as like sea lady. So you can do some activities like like in a uh, like natural swimming pool. Somebody like put some avalon or like cucumber like something like that like you can just experience as sea lady so but you have to pay right but we did we haven't tried that those activities because we don't want to pay extra money that's our way of avoiding yeah, yeah. spending a lot of money because I'll, I'll give an example I'll just like I'll, I'll say this to the camera so people know mm -hmm. um, so just for an example, Jeju is actually a really expensive place mm -hmm. in general. Mm -hmm. So hotels are normally at least 50,000 won for one night. And like these kind of experiences you can do, like let's say go-karting or the Heino experience. Mm -hmm. Those are all like 70,000 won or like, they're all way too expensive for us to do. So instead of doing those activities that most people do, we choose to do things that you don't have to pay money for. Like enjoying, I mean, the ocean is free, right? You just, you don't even need goggles, but we bought some cheap goggles just to make it more fun. Yeah. And then we can do it as much as we want. We don't have to worry about like spending our money. And then that gives us a little bit more leeway so we can eat at least one like healthy meal every day. Because just eating at the convenience store is a, uh, it's not the healthiest option, yeah. for sure. Um, so every day, we usually eat two meals at the convenience store. So breakfast, I'll just give an example of what we eat. So we normally buy some granola and some yogurt, and I have a coffee, and that's about 5,000 won between the two of us, five to 6,000 won. Then for lunch, we have like some kimbap, some of the instant burgers, or Noodle. ramen, Noodle. eggs, kimchi, like all of the kind of the cheap things you can buy at the convenience store, which would be about 10,000 won or less. And then that leaves us with the, a lot of money left over for dinner. Because we eat at the convenience store twice per day, then we can have like a nicer dinner. And there's a lot of good restaurants in Jeju, but they're they're not cheap at all. The It's usually about 15,000 won per meal per person. So if we have dinner together at a restaurant, it's about 30,000 won, which is more than double our breakfast and lunch combined mm. at the convenience store. It's not including like fare, bus fare, or like accommodation but still the budget is not that enough to enjoy like to go restaurant every time so that's this is the way we like found for both of us <laughs> first of all we have a two-person tent it's a backpacking tent um, that's necessary, obviously, mm -hmm. you need a tent. Uh, we both have an air mattress that we sleep on. We didn't have any room in our bags for a sleeping bag, so we just brought a sleeping bag liner each, which is a lot smaller than a sleeping bag. But since it's not that cold in Jeju, we thought it would be okay. Yeah. But it actually wasn't enough, so we had to buy another blanket at the convenience store for, I think it was like, 12,000 won or something. Mm -hmm. So that was an extra expense. Um, we both have a, an air pillow that's really small. And we have, oh, we both have a head lantern. So we can use, we can keep the tent light at night. And if we need to do something, we can see it at night. Mm -hmm. um, and for better sleep, you need a sleeping mask, sleeping mask. An ear plug? Yeah. Yeah, ear plugs. Necessary. <laughs> and this is kind of a luxury, and originally we weren't planning on bringing them, but these chairs we're on right oh, now yeah. are, chair. it's kind of unnecessary to be honest when you're camping because you can sit in other places, but mm. 
We just wanted to like make the situation as comfortable as possible. So we also brought the camping chairs. So for example, our camping chairs were more important than a sleeping bag. <laughs> we, we had to get rid of our sleeping bags so we could bring chairs. Yeah. That's a, uh, cause we just want to relax, you know, on the beach. Oh, I, but we have other gear too. Okay, so we, we also have a camping shower, which is just a bag that you fill up with water and you can use it like a sink or a shower. Mm -hmm. We have a, a laundry line, mm -hmm. so we can hang our clothing after swimming or laundry. Mm -hmm. And we have a, a camping sink. So you fill it up with water and it stays like, it stays upright. So you put it on the ground, you put stuff in it, and when you put water inside, it slowly rises like that. Mm -hmm. So you can fill it up like a sink and you can do your laundry in the, the camping sink. Yeah. But uh, we've gone to two hotels since we've been here and we've just been really dirty while camping and we did laundry at the <laughs> hotels instead. So while we're here, we're making YouTube videos and the gear that we use is, we have one vlogging camera, the Sony ZV-1, which we use for just like doing the general filmmaking stuff. We have a GoPro Hero 10, and that's when we go swimming or if it's raining or we need some kind of action shots to make it more exciting. We also have a drone, which is the DJI Mavic Air 2. And that's actually probably the most important filmmaking tool we have is the drone because we have to show the environment mm. and it's hard to show how beautiful Jeju is without a drone. It is possible, but it's a lot easier with a drone for sure. And then we just have one tripod. Um, we have a laptop each. We both have a MacBook. I use it for editing and Eugene uses hers for subtitles. Uh, we have one editing hard drive, which is a SSD. And we have one hard drive for storage and backup, just to make two copies of everything. And we have a vlogging tripod, a GoPro tripod, and that's everything. Oh, we also have a, a regular tripod, just a, a lightweight, like it's almost made of plastic, some Manfrotto, like cheap tripod. And the chargers you're talking about? Um, and oh yeah, and while we're while we're camping, we don't have access to electricity, so we have a solar panel charger with three USB ports, and that's enough to charge all of the camera equipment, and the laptops too to a certain extent, and also our phones we can charge them, but the drones we need a an actual wall outlet to charge. Uh, it's because it's. It's a safety thing, so DJI doesn't allow you to charge with like any other chargers. You have to use their charger. But uh, I'll, I'll give a little tip too. So this isn't like a, a good thing to do, but sometimes there's outlets inside the washroom. So we like charge the drone battery just using the power in the bathroom. <laughs> Okay, so for clothes, um, Eugene and I are a little bit different. Okay, so I have three t-shirts, three pairs of underwear, three socks, and two pairs of shorts, and one rain jacket. That's all of my clothes. And this hat. And then for shoes, I just have like Vans sneakers, and then one pair of sandals. So basically, it's a little bit dirty for sure, but you kind of get used to it. And since you can swim in the ocean every day, that helps a lot. You actually feel really clean after because we go swimming and then kind of rinse off with the, our camping shower and you get rid of that like sticky feeling from the ocean. When we first came to Jeju, I should have had warmer stuff, but I just kind of, I was cold a lot for sure. I don't even remember what clothes I put because I like, thought about when I was planning like JJ trip, I, I just thought, oh, I'm, I'm gonna try run like, along with the beach. So 
I need a, like a, mm, some clothes for running and then hiking, of course, like Hala Mountain, hiking and then swimming and something like that. So I just packed everything for activities I would love to try. <laughs> so I have so many clothes, way more than he does. So I can't. I can't, rem I can't make a list right now, but probably four pants and then oh, so many. <laughs> yeah, everything that we mentioned, um, when we first came yeah. here, we just had two backpacks and I have a shoulder bag for mm -hmm. the YouTube stuff. But mm -hmm. if we weren't doing YouTube videos, we wouldn't need this shoulder bag for anything. It's mm -hmm. only YouTube. Mm -hmm. So if if people want to live like that, like we're living here, um, they just need like a 35 liter backpack, not even like a huge backpacking backpack. And you can make it work. It's not the most comfortable lifestyle, but as it's getting warmer, it's a lot easier for sure. Mm -hmm. So Jeju is the most popular destination for Koreans right now because it's hard to travel to other countries with the pandemic. So on the weekends, since it's peak season right now, June is really, really popular for Jeju. Weekends are like over 100,000 won, I think, mm -hmm. for one way. Mm -hmm. But we went in the middle of the week, just on the cheapest airline we could find. It was called Air Seoul. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never even heard of it before this trip, actually. But uh, it was 40,000 won for each ticket. So quite, even though it's peak season, it's pretty affordable, mm. for sure. But it was only June, so it was quite cheap back then. But now it's really high. Yeah, it might be yeah. more expensive The vacation now. is just started right now. So it's expensive, should it be expensive. So, so far, we've gone to hotels about once a week. Um, and we did two days each time. So the first time we went to a hotel and it started raining really heavily. So we didn't want to like start camp in the pouring rain, like get all of our stuff out when it's wet. So we decided to stay two nights that time. And the second time we wanted to climb Halasan with like, without our backpacks. So we rented a hotel and we went on the hike and left our gear in the room so it'd be safe because I'm not super comfortable about leaving my camera gear mm. at like a luggage storage mm. and still I'd rather just spend like the 45 that or no the hotel was 37,000 won mm. so pretty cheap mm -hmm. and I'd rather be comfortable that my gear is safe mm because that's such a little price compared to how much the gear is. We wanted to try Jimjebang. Jimjebang is a sauna place. You can sleep there or you can just use the sauna uh, like for releasing your muscles. Anyway, we wanted to try Jimjebang or guest house other than hotel or tent, but the cost was way more than we expected like not Jim Jibang, but the guest house if you're traveling alone guest houses are okay yeah but if you're traveling as a couple it's actually cheaper to stay at a hotel yeah because it was 37,000 for a nice hotel in Sogipo and it's 25,000 per person at a guest house mm -hmm. so it's yeah traveling as a couple is a lot different mm -hmm. than traveling mm -hmm. alone Normally we film a lot when we do our YouTube videos, but we've been relaxing a lot too. <laughs> but we film just enough to make one video every week mm -hmm. when we're here. Mm -hmm. And we normally try to kind of show a little bit of our camping lifestyle, like what you can expect if you're living out of a backpack without that much camping gear. And we try and go on like one adventure for every video. So like the first week we went to Songaksan, which is a it's a really beautiful mountain in on the southern tip of Jeju. And then the second week we went to Halasan and we filmed up there. So try to like have a little bit of variety in our videos. Mm -hmm. So it's not 
just us like relaxing the whole time. And we, we also want to do adventures too. It's fun going up mountains and exploring too. Okay, thank you guys for your interview. Thank you very much, Vladimir. Thank that was, you so much. That was a fun interview. <laughs> <laughs> For detailed information, check their YouTube channel, Lost and Found. Link is in the description section below. By the way, I launched Buy Me A Coffee page, so if you like what I'm doing and you want to support me, you can buy me a coffee or fuel for more videos like that. Link is in the description section down below. That's it for this video, thank you for watching, hit the like button if you liked it, subscribe for more and I will see you guys and girls in the next one. Peace!